At the end of the 1940s, the British government were threatened by the strategic jet bombers of the Soviet Union, capable of striking deep into British territory with nuclear weapons. This scenario became all too real in 1947, when Soviet bombers like the IL-28 entered service, and Britain found herself without an adequate defence. And that is where our star comes in. This is the story of the Gloucester Javelin. Let's set the stage. It's 1947, World War II just ended two years ago and the world is still very much in the process of rebuilding. During the war, huge technological advancements were made, such as the jet engine and the nuclear bomb. The Soviets realised that if you combine these technologies, you could create something unstoppable. Previously, nuclear weapons had to be delivered via slow-flying bombers. Now, the same could be achieved at Mark II. This posed a huge threat to the British mainland and NATO. In response, the British placed great emphasis on advancing aerial supremacy by continuing to develop their fighter technology. Even following the end of World War II, Britain recognised the importance of staying ahead. So, in 1947, the Air Ministry issued a competition to build Britain's next generation interceptor. It called for a two-seat, all-weather, supersonic, high-flying interceptor, more specifically 40,000 feet, while having a maximum speed of 535 knots, or just over Mark 1, in level flight. Additional criteria included a minimum flight endurance of 2 hours, takeoff distance of 1500 yards, 4G maneuvers at high speed, and the capability to carry a powerful radar along with all types of radio equipment. On top of all that, it needed to be an economical aircraft, capable of being mass produced at a rate of at least 150 aircraft per month. On April 13th, 1949, the Air Ministry chose two aircraft manufacturers, Gloucester and the Havilland, to each represent their competing designs. These prototype aircraft were the Gloucester GA-5, designed by Richard Walker, and the de Havilland DH-110, a latter which was under consideration for the Royal Navy. The first prototype of the Gloucester Javelin was completed in 1951, and after ground testing, it flew on November 26, 1951. Chief test pilot Bill Warrington described it as easy to fly, but no other issues with power controls. During one test, aerodynamic flutter caused the elevators to detach mid-flight. Warrington landed the aircraft using tailpin trimming and engine thrust, earning the George Medal. The second prototype, with a modified wing, crashed in 1953 due to a deep stall, killing test pilot Peter Rowens. This led to the development of a stall warning device. The prototype, equipped with an operational radar, flew on March 7, 1953, and the fourth prototype was tested by Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment, and the fifth one flew in July of 1954. And after all that, it was finally chosen. While the de Havilland DH-110 was chosen for the Royal Navy. Despite some early challenges, the Javelin quickly became a crucial part of the IF's air defence, deployed to all major bases across Britain. It played a vital role in guarding UK airspace during the Cold War, with its advanced radar and all-weather capabilities. As new variants were introduced, the aircraft saw improved performance, particularly in high-altitude interception missions. The Javelin also served in overseas deployments, including regions like the Middle East and Southeast Asia, where it helped maintain British air defence commitments. However, as more advanced missile systems and faster fighter jets emerged, the Javelin's operational importance declined. And by the late 1960s, missile technology had advanced so much that an interceptor flying at Mark 1 was not very really useful. What happened was, nuclear weapons were put onto missiles going into space at Mark 
10. No aircraft can defend against that. Therefore, the aircraft was useless against these new missiles. However, interceptors were still needed for conventional bombers, which is the reason it flew for so long. However, newer interceptor designs made their appearance and were better and more modern, such as the electric lightning. And in April 1968, the Gloucester Javelin was retired for good, with a total of 436 produced of all variants. Pretty impressive for a 1960s interceptor. Here we will take a look at the Javelin Mark 9. It was a relatively large aircraft being 17 meters long and 4 meters high with a wingspan of 16 meters. Its maximum speed is 620 knots at 40,000 feet. It can fly as high as 52,000 feet with a range of 830 nautical miles. In terms of armament, the Gloucester Javelin was equipped with four 30mm Aden cannons and could carry up to four De Havilland Fire Streak air to air missiles. For avionics, it was fitted with a Westinghouse APQ-43 radar system and the aircraft's power came from two Armstrong Sidley Sapphire 7R afterburning turboprop engines, providing 11,000 pounds of thrust each and 12,300 pounds with afterburner. So, in conclusion, the Gloucester Javelin protected Britain's skies for over a decade. It was the pinnacle of 1950s British aviation engineering, with a lot of love poured into it. However, like all aircraft, it eventually became obsolete and it was retired in the late 1960s. This beautiful bird can still be seen today at different places around the world. Thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. See ya!